Hey, great day to you all. I hope that you were all able to wake up this morning and install a gratitude kind of attitude for your day. What do I mean? Well, hey, I hope that you told yourself you were grateful to be alive. Again, another day. And I hope that you told yourself how amazing you are and how capable you are and how everything is possible for yourself should you make it that way. And you know something? You are exactly what you believe yourself to be. Okay? So if you tell yourself you're broke, well, you are. And if you tell yourself that you're just not enough, well, then that's exactly what you are. And if you tell yourself that, uh, you know, it's not worth it, well, then it won't be. The best investment that you can make in yourself is better thinking, better speaking, and better doing. And you know what? It may seem crazy to most, but, you know, last night I was going through some stuff. And I found my reflection journals from 2016. So that's eight years ago. And I flipped through it. And I reread what I had written there. And you know what? Talking about that makes me want to pull it out. All right. So when I tell you that the best investment that you can make in yourself, that's facts. Had I not invested in my own well-being, I would not be well today. Literally. And this is inner work. I tell you guys about inner work that has to be done to be able to master your own being. Well, this is inner work that I did before I was even spiritually awakened. Because this is the stuff that you got to get past in order to be fully aligned and in your power. Yeah. So I'll show you my first my first page of my inner work reflection journal that I came across yesterday, last night. I did this January 16th, 2016. Okay? So this was just motivation. All right? So you can see the data at the bottom. But that's not it. You know what? I was struggling with addiction back then. Well, I have all of the overcoming addiction psalms here. Okay, because I had to master what addiction was. I had to master why I was living in addiction to pull myself out of it. Okay. Wow. Self-reflection. January 16th, 2016. All right. Let me read it to you to really solidify for you guys what it is to do inner work and self-reflecting and correcting the things that we have been installed with that are not serving you any good. Okay? So, self-reflection from January 16th, 2016, it reads like this. I'm truly blessed in my life. I have great insight, which I thank the universe every day. Simple reminders to myself. Simplify everything. Remember the law of least effort. Do not allow any external factors to sway my inner peace or happiness. Only I can give permission for that to happen. Be truly content within myself, no matter what the circumstance. Remember nature's laws, love, balance, harmony, simplicity. My energy must flow like water over rocks, smooth without resistance or without restriction. Keep my mind fresh with new positive thoughts and ideas. No stagnant ponds with gloomy thoughts. Feed my brain with knowledge. Knowledge to the mind is like food to the stomach. It's essential. Figure out what makes me tick again. 
That's a huge one. I alone must control my thoughts. Under no circumstances must I sway. I am strong. I am loving. I am okay. I have been, I have forgiven myself wholeheartedly. I can do anything better than ever. Every day, always. Gratitude. And then I close this self-reflection page, these two pages, with, Dear God, please continue to guide me to make the right choices. Bless me with health, insight, endurance, determination, and love. This is stuff that I did eight years ago. Self-reflection is key. That has nothing to do with anybody else. You have to go inside your own being and see what is hindering you from getting the most out of life. What was hindering me? Negative thinking about myself and the world. Not having a clear picture about what I wanted and what I wanted to feel in my own life every day. I was stuck in an automatic programming which I was programmed with as a kid. So, some of those limiting beliefs. Money doesn't grow on trees. Money's the root of all evil. You got to work hard for money. Okay? So that's why I stayed broke all my life. And I had to fight to build anything. It's because of those limiting beliefs. Okay? Why did I end up getting sick? Why did I end up having to live it? Because of my limiting beliefs. About not being able to be happy because of external circumstances. About believing that I needed other people in my life to make me whole. Believing that I was not enough. Believing that I was fucked up because everybody always told me that all my life. No, I'm not the one that's fucked up. So these are the corrections that need to be made within your own being in order to thrive and get the most out of your experience. Okay? Uh, yes, I was one that believed that I was defined by my life and what I had to live. And it's not the case. It's a false misconception of who you really think you are. And that's why it's important that people do the inner work. Nobody can hand that to you. And if you don't do that for yourself, you will never get over what is hindering you. Ever. Look, it's as simple as this. I created cancer within my own body. From my thoughts. From my anger. From my emotions that I stored in my body about my life. Well, you can't just cure cancer like I did, on your own, with no intervention, unless you fix what has caused it. Okay? So I first-handedly know why my body created a cancerous state. Because what I was storing in my body from my life was cancerous to me. The people around me in my life were cancerous to me. They brought me nothing good. All I fed off of was negativity around me 24-7. Okay? Well, in order to fix the cancer that I had created in my body, I needed to get right with myself, which I did. This is all of the self-reflection work that I had to do. To rid myself of cancer. No doctor did that for me. And I did no chemo. I did no invasive surgeries. What they did was they took biopsies, gave me the results, and I took the reins from there. Okay? people. Some people think it's humanly impossible. But no, I've made it possible for myself. How did I do it? By getting right with my thoughts what I was storing in my body, the things that I was saying and the things that I was doing. Literally. You can make anything possible for yourself. The best investment that you can make for yourself is not investing in that paycheck that's going to pay your bills. 
No, it's investing in you being the strongest, most capable being there is on the planet that makes everything else possible for you. Literally. You cannot be investing all of your time and your energy and your thoughts and speech and actions into things that are driving you into the ground and think that you're going to be okay. Because that's not the case. Okay, you really need to tap in and figure yourself out. That is the biggest key to unlocking an abundant mindset, an abundant healthy state, and to be abundant in anything that you put your energy into. Like I say all the time, you got to do the inner work. You have to. Why do I say this? Because I just read you proof of inner work that I did eight years ago to get right with myself. You can't just wake up one day and no, you can consciously make choices for yourself. That's fine. But what's running automatically? That's what you need to figure out. And if you don't take the time to sit with yourself and take a look at what you believe to be real for yourself, you cannot correct it. We're living in a state of overload, sensory overload. You get distracted by everything, your schedules, your life, your responsibilities, things you're accountable for, things you must do. That's fine. But in all of that, where do you fall on the list of priorities? Because if you're not okay, nothing you're doing is okay. If you're not showing up as 100%, you will not get back 100% out of anything you're doing. That's just the way it is. So you can be insistent to resisting taking a good look at yourself but those are the exact results that you're creating in your life the biggest shift that i ever had in my life was to know that i was doing it to my own being and all of the learning that i invested in for self-mastery was the biggest investment that i could have ever made in my life not only for me but for everybody attached to me. I couldn't keep operating the way that I had been operating. All it was doing was pushing me to death time and time and time again. It kept creating in my body states of really not being okay. And I've done a lot of great things in my life and I've changed thousands of people's lives. Just being the president of the second largest cooperative housing unit in North America alone was my biggest amplification of making and producing mass good karma at once. And I did that intentionally. Knowing that I had a lot to clean up. Okay? And I did that for years. The decisions that I chose and I took affected three to 5,000 people on a daily basis. Okay? Well, if you can't be accountable for your own thoughts and your own mindset and your own speaking and doing, you cannot take the accountability on for three to 5,000 residents. You see? So, you got to invest in yourself. What do I mean by that? Invest in your well-being. Okay? We all get up and we function from an automatic system. Should you allow it to do that? So what do I mean? You get up in the morning and you do the same things over and over again and not even notice it. So you get up, you go to the bathroom, you make your coffee, you... I want you to take a look at all of the things that you do automatically in your day without even thinking about it. 
When you get into your car, you think about your destination, right? Well, you don't think about the focus is not on whether you're controlling your car or not. It, you run it automatically once it's set like that. Well, you're programmed the same way. To just run automatically according to the beliefs and according to what you have been made to believe to be true. You got to disrupt the pattern. And that's all you have to do. The minute that you can be aware of your patterns and actually want change for yourself, the first step to doing it all is disrupt your patterns. Disrupt it. And you're going to see it feels weird. Well, that's a good weird. There is nothing like disrupting your patterns. I tell you, I've done it. And man, have I had to disrupt many patterns in my life. But you have to disrupt the pattern. So, what's the easiest way to disrupt your automatic thinking program? To take a look at it. What do you think about yourself primarily? What do you believe to be true? You got to take a look at it. How do you take a look at it? Pen and paper. I told you guys about having workbooks. Listen, I've got workbooks all over my house. And look, this one's dated from eight years ago. Guys, you got to take the time to invest in yourself by disrupting your existent thoughts, patterns, beliefs, and even the way you talk and do things to get the most change. Just disrupt the pattern to start. And when you disrupt the pattern and you realize how odd it makes you feel and how uncomfortable you, uncomfortable you get, well, then you realize how bad it's needed. Literally. But how many of us go through life doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, expecting a different result. You can't. Literally, you can't. You must shift and break the patterns if you want different results in your life. Well, you got to take a look at the results that you've created for yourself in all areas of your life to actually see if you're getting the most out of it. So what do I mean by that? Well, When you think your thoughts, are they making you feel good? Or are you thinking things that don't make you feel good? When you speak with people, are these interactions uplifting you? Or are you drained and feeling destroyed and disempowered when you walk away? Take a look at that, because that's real. Are you showing up as the best version of yourself humanly possible? Because that's according to how you show up is exact correlation to what you're going to get out of it. Literally. That's all of choices. And people think, oh no, it's my circumstance, my situation, my this, my that, my that, 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 Bag of excuses, they should be your reasons. Simple. The biggest shift that I made for myself was turning excuses into reasons. Okay? And changing the why me to why not me. Okay? And changing I can't to, huh, oh yes I can. Watch me do it. See, a lot of people don't understand, eh, and realize. I read my book out here, my first book, Turning Hell into Heaven. I read it out here live. Now, during that reading, I made it very clear to everybody that I had gotten a message that I was going to die three days before that incident in ICU. I had been told and instructed that should I decide to end, let it all happen, 
that I had three days to prepare myself and my family and to clear out my house and to do whatever I had to do because the countdown was on. Well, the day of my supposed death, I put a white sheet on my couch so that, hey, nobody would have to shoot my dogs to get to my dead body. Okay? Well, after the neighbor from upstairs barged into my house and asked me, Toby, what are you doing? And I just told him, hey, I'm just waiting to die. And then from him picking up the phone and me ending up in intensive care, they give me 16 hours to live and me just getting pissed off enough at them because I didn't want anybody governing me but me in the universe that I said, oh, yeah, okay, I won't die today. I had accepted my death before going to ICU. So within 24 hours, yeah, I got a little pissed off at what the microbiologist said to me. He pissed me off. Why? Because he told me, no, I'm not letting you go home to die. The only way you're leaving here is in a body bag. So accept it. And I said, oh, yeah, watch me go. So I went from on the verge of allowing myself to die, feeling the blood filling in my lungs, letting my body go into total septic shock because that's where I was at. Organ failure, kidneys had shut down, couldn't create urine. Uh, my liver was shut down. My heart was about to explode. Hello. All it took was for me to get pissed off. For me to turn it around. Well, I want you all to get a little pissed off about what you've accepted for yourself up until now. If that's what it takes, do it. Because that's what does it for me. Literally. You know what does it for me? When somebody tells me what's possible for me. That is my hugest driving force on the planet, is when somebody tells me I can't do something. Because I know I can do everything and anything I put my heart to. Mind over matter, yes. But spirit before all. Okay? Because what drives that mind? Your spirit. What drives all of your capacities? Your spirit, your will, and your thriving force. But are you working in alignment with it? Is it helping you? Or is this power destroying you by what? Your own thoughts you refuse to correct? Your own ways of being that you refuse to correct? Hey, what you think, say, and do creates your reality. No matter what. So if you are not taking a good look and investing the time and effort into actually taking a good look at how you operate, you will continuously <laughs> drive yourself into the ground. Literally. I know. I did it first-handedly. So nobody can sit here and tell me they're not driving themselves into the ground if they are not thinking, saying, and doing properly for themselves. How does this happen? Lack of self-love, lack of self-accountability, lack of even self-knowing. You don't know yourself if your brain is running you automatically. So I'll ask you guys today. Are you, are you just living your life according to what your brain is doing? Are you in control of what your brain is doing? Very different magnitude. Guys, I want you guys all to tap into your power. How do you do that? you got to get to know yourself. Literally. 
And a lot of people walk around going, oh, I know myself. And I just look at them going, bullshit. You don't know yourself because if you did, you wouldn't operate the way you do. Literally. <coughs> Guys, you've got to invest in yourself. Invest in sitting down with yourself. Literally. You know what? Here's another... You know, did you see that date? January 26, 2016. I'll read you another page of my inner work to give you another idea. Guys, literally, you got to invest in yourself. Yes, it's taken me years to self-master. That's why I never came out before it, talking about it. Okay? This is why I'm only coming out now, after five years of being spiritually awakened. But I've been doing the inner work for over 15 years to master myself. There's the difference. I have been investing in me for more than 15 years to master myself. Now that I have, now I'm ready to help others do it. This is the difference. I'm going to read you guys a page of my inner work from January 26, 2016. Things matter more than ever. Shit that I would normally keep a blind eye to makes me short-tempered. No, I don't like chaos, conflict, confusion, or crap. I am assertive, clear, concise when explaining myself. Maybe it comes off as aggressivity, manic, but can't there be a level of common understanding amongst humans? The view of uniqueness, exp the view of uniqueness, experience guides the eye to see. This should be motivated with an open mind and a non-judgmental attitude. This is my weak point that needs to be strengthened. I figure that others' minds should be like mine. I have been blessed with a brilliant mind, intact logic, and an extensive gratitude for the insight and guidance in which I am blessed with daily. I feel that others should be just as capable, if not more capable, of controlling their minds, thoughts, ideas, and actions. The realization of being driven by oneself is a disturbing concept for some to grasp. One's ideas lead to be one's thoughts, which leads to one's words, which leads to actions, which leads to habits, which lead to a way of life. People constantly entertain certain thoughts and say certain things that destroy any chance of anything good ever happening. Keeping a positive mindset above all is key. Being a kind, caring, selfless, loving individual opens doors to abundance in many forms. Well-wishing gives more to an individual than actually giving an individual something material. My problem seems to be I'm too manic. I jump into things too wholeheartedly. If I could only want as much for myself as I want for others, I would be okay. I think I overdo it most times, like I just experienced, just looking out for somebody, but get chewed out. I just don't get it. I see things as they are, or at least I continuously try to. Sometimes my view is clouded by the opinions or actions of others. It is quite difficult to keep pulling out arrows out of my shield. I mean by this, what I mean by this is when I try to be nurturing, loving, caring, sometimes it's just too much for some to handle. That's okay. That's when it's time to sit back and allow things to be the way that they are meant to be. The universe will set whatever should be into play. 
must have the dependence and reliance in the universe. Nothing but the universe. Man is human. Yes, man. Yes, made in God's perfection. Yet man is governed by free will, which gives him the choice of free thought, free ideas, free speech, free action to do as the person sees fit. Not always making the right choices. Any choice that we are forced, any choice that we are faced to make affects many individuals. The ripple effect is serious and really does send vibrations and effects of all forms of energy. Keep my mind right. You see, this is inner work that I did eight years ago. Okay? I have been on this journey for a very, very, very long time. And I'm still open to learning. This is what I want you guys to all understand. It doesn't happen overnight. But you've got to start somewhere. The biggest start that you've got to take is to disrupt the patterns in your life. Do things that you're not used to doing. Change your schedule up. Do not allow your body to be on a continuous routine that is not serving you of your highest good. Disrupt your thinking patterns by taking a look at the thoughts you're having. Why are you thinking like that? Are you maintaining the same thinking patterns now as you have all your life, according to your life experience? Because all it was was a mere experience. And it no longer exists except for in your own being. So you have to take a look at what you're thinking and storing about your life. And who do you see yourself to be? It's really key. It really is. And I can't stress it enough. And you know, a lot of people have asked me lately. A lot of people have asked me. Toby, with all your knowledge and all of this power, why are you not already a millionaire? Because it never interested me to be. My big thing is for people to not feel the way that they feel. I don't need a million dollars to do that. If I had a million dollars, which I will acquire a million dollars this year, easily. But that's besides the point. If I had a million dollars, or if I had today five billion dollars... What I would do with it is very much different than anybody else would. Because I would take that $5,000, turn it into, fifth, uh, let's say, $5 billion. I would take the $5 billion, turn it into $15 billion, and change the whole fucking world. It's not just about me. It's about everybody. Yeah. I would totally abolish what is going on now and recreate a system that everybody would thrive in. That's what I would do with the money. Yeah, literally. I would open healing centers and schools and all kinds of things for people that we would not construct a system that we're living in like this. There's no way. Nobody needs to be harnessed to survival, ever. It's a simple, mere choice. And if we all collectively got together and stood up for the power of what we're fueling and take our power back from it, it would be abolished overnight. I know that. Because why is it the way that it is? It is a collective consciousness thinking this way, manifesting this reality. Yeah. Why are times really hard? Well, because the accumulation of all the people that believe it is. Yeah. Why does this system have the power over us? Well, because people give it the power. Yeah. 
People think, oh, money doesn't grow on trees, and money's the root of all evil, and money's hard to acquire bullshit. We are abundant by birthright. Money is a frequency. That's all it is. How do I know? Because being abundant in myself, the universe always supplies me with everything I need. Everything. Everything, 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 everything. And if it's not of my highest good, well then, the, yes, there's confusion to get it. But anything that is genuinely meant for me, the universe supplies me with. Literally. The universe is my back and is my fuel, and I'm a vessel for the universe right now on this planet. And I will continue to be. And that is what's going to bring me the billions of dollars because, well, the universe is abundant and everything already exists. So Toby, as the billionaire, already exists. Toby, as the billionaire changing the world, already exists. Yeah. Factually, because we're all... We're living on parallel timelines and everything, but that's a little too advanced for all of you guys anyway. But I'm jumping timelines. This year, I'm jumping timelines. This year, I'm not the Toby that survived. And, uh, da, 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 nah. This year, it's the Toby that used every single life experience to her benefit and not to her destruction. This is the change this year. Guys, I love y'all. I want you guys all to get the best thinking in order, the best speaking in order, and the best way of being in order. And not for anybody else but you. Because what you don't realize is all of those negative thoughts are producing negative feelings. They're keeping you sick. How do you change that? Well, well, well. You start with a pen and paper. And uh, actually... Let me show you. I won't show you details, but I believe it's in this book. Uh, no, I'll get the other book. See, I don't play around. I don't play around when it comes to my learning and my, uh, my stuff. You see, the biggest investment you can make is in your own... Now, I don't need to show you the details of this, but I do need to show you this. Okay? Gratitude journal. When I could not find a reason to be grateful, even after beating death, why? Because I started to question, why the fuck did I beat death? Because this life is shit. Who wants to live this? Okay? Factually. I couldn't get over how many times I had to beat death just to suffer all over again. Wow. I had to find my reasons to be grateful and recondition my brain. Rewire the brain. I don't just sit here and tell you guys what you need to do that I haven't done for myself. This is why I can't accept excuses from people. Oh, they're too busy doing sweet fuck all than to invest in their own well-being. They accept these states of being for themselves that is destroying them. I don't want that for anybody. And this is why I come out and this is why I do what I do. This is why I've published eight books. It's for change in this world. And for people to be okay. Why wouldn't I want people to be okay? Especially when I feel everybody's energy. And I'm really sorry to say it, but I feel more shit energy coming at me than great. So why would I not want change for people? I want people to be the best that they can be for themselves. Well, it benefits all of us. 
I had to pick my side of the fence. I could walk around hating myself in the world, then where would it get me? Right next to death again. Why would anybody accept that from themselves when they know better? And they can do better. And they can make anything happen for themselves. Well, I'm proof of the pudding. Okay? And sometimes we got to get a little pissed off for the fuel, for the fire. Well, if there's anybody you got to get pissed off at, get pissed off with yourself. And disrupt those fucking patterns. Because you can do it. I had to. And it took me years to reinstall and rewire my brain. Well, I've done it. It doesn't matter about circumstance, situation, or scenario. I've never been given anything in my life. So... I didn't have money to invest in programs. I still don't have money to invest in programs. Did it stop me from accomplishing it? No. Okay? Factually, I sit here trying to teach the world how to be better, and I don't even know where I'm doing my groceries next because of the lack of finances right now. After what I just allowed for myself, trying to love somebody. Yeah, right. I'm still picking up the fucking pieces, but am I sitting out here crying about it? Or am I teaching all of you guys how to get right with yourselves? You see the difference? None of you guys understand the depths of my situation, but yet I'm out here preaching to y'all. All right, so if I can do it, all of you can do it. And I don't want any fucking excuses because you know what? I have a million excuses to sit here and be a shitty person. Trust that if I wanted to use excuses. But those same million excuses are the same million reasons why I refuse to do it. And I will flood greatness into this whole experience for every single person for the rest of my life. Okay? Guys, I want you guys to take yourselves seriously. Try this. Take a piece of paper and a pen. Okay? I'll give you a minute to do that. And you know what I want you to do? Write down a list of all the things you love. Literally. And then I'm curious to know how many of you put yourselves on that list. The biggest difference with me is I wasn't on that list when I did it for myself. Well, now I'm at the top of that list by choice alone. And I hope and pray that you all could put yourselves there too. And when you do, understand that is the biggest investment that you could make in yourself humanly possible within your life experience. Y'all can do it. Okay? With no excuses. Because we all have excuses should we want to cop out a life using them. And I have a bag full of excuses about <sighs> should I choose that? But I don't. So I encourage you all to turn every excuse you have for yourself into a factual reason why you must do it. Literally. I love y'all. Set that high vibe. This is why I come out here and do it. 
And I learn every day, eh? So let me drop it like this too. Yes, I'm self-mastered. Yes, I've rewritten limiting beliefs. Yes, nothing can stop me now but my own being. So, I'd like you guys to get into that situation for yourselves too. We all put ourselves in daily situations, circumstances, and scenarios. Take a look at it. And even after self-mastery, and even after eight books that I've written, and even after everything I have done, I am still learning on a daily basis. By choice alone. I hope and pray you guys do too. I love you all. Get the most out of your day. Set that high vibe and put yourself on the top of your to-do list. Literally. I love you all. Peace.